Greetings and fellow travelers. Welcome to this edition of the Levels of Love Tips podcast, where we discuss and break down any and everything relationships. I'm your host, the Stormy Poet, and I'm extremely glad all of you could join us today, whatever time of day it is for you. It could be nighttime where you're at. It could be the middle of the day. You could be at work, wherever you're at. Thank you for joining us. I'm extremely um, glad that all you, you could join us, and I'm extremely glad to be here, actually, because it's been a while since I've done one of these. It's been a hot minute since I've done one of these. It's been, I think, about a year. About a year since I've done one of these. It's been a minute, y'all. I've had a couple of things I've been having to deal with, some personal issues, but those have been resolved. I'm not here to make excuses. I'm back, and I'm here to stay, and I'll leave it at that. But I appreciate everyone's patience. And I hope I can give you some really good information in these podcasts about relationships in general, just everything in general in terms of whether it be romantic relationships, whether it be professional ones, I'm trying to give you all the game in all that regard. So I really appreciate you tuning in and I hope that I can earn your subscription and I hope that you can get something out of it, man. I plan on doing these on a regular basis, man. I miss doing these. I miss the family. I miss the emails I used to get. You know, I miss giving out the advice. I miss helping people. And I love giving as much information as humanly possible. So I hope that y'all allow me to be a benefit to your lives. It's an honor to me. It's a pleasure and a privilege. And I love hosting this platform. So hit the subscribe button. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you're on Spotify, if you're on, um, if you're on Anchor, if you're on uh, iHeartRadio, I'm on a lot of the, the podcast sites, by, by the way. The, most of the major podcast sites I'm on, with the exception of Apple and Pandora. Man, I tried to get my stuff on there, but it just didn't work out. It, I forget what error message it kept giving me, but basically I think what they would want me to do was, was pay to be on those streaming sites, if I'm not mistaken. I was able to get on... I was able to get on... A lot of the major ones like Spotify and all that. Uh, iHeartRadio was another one I was able to get on. Uh, Google Podcast, which which is another major one I was able to get on that too. But for some reason, Apple and Pandora, I forget why they wouldn't let me sign up, but they wouldn't let me move forward with actually putting my stuff on that platform. So I'm sorry for all the Apple users. You know, my bad. Google's just as good if you just, you know... Um, Go on the Google podcast platform and search the Levels of Love podcast. It'll pop up on there, and it's free. You don't have to sign up as long as you got a Google account. They'll let it play. They'll let it play on there. So you don't even have to have like Spotify or any of that. Oh, uh, and there's a, there's another one. Oh, Amazon Music was another one. Amazon Music and uh, eBooks. And I forget the uh, official name of it, but basically the eBook site, the main one that's actually linked with Amazon. So Amazon Music and Amazon Books, um, they both have it on there and then like eBooks. So check me out on all those platforms. Feel free to, and like I said, it's good to be back. I missed y'all, man, I really did. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these and I, I'm gonna get back into the flow of things. But without any further ado, what I wanted to talk about this evening was a particular subject that's really been weighing on my heart. And here's what I mean by that. Um, I've just been noticing, and I've been noticing it for a while, which is why I started doing this podcast, but I've just been noticing a rift between the men and the women being in successful relationships. And I'm not going to get into the whole feminist versus red pill debate i don't subscribe to either of those ideologies so both of those are irrelevant to me just putting that out there right out the gate but i think ladies and gentlemen i think it's deeper than that i don't think it's an inherent thing that's wrong with the men's side and i don't think it's an inherent thing that's wrong on the men's side if anything there is a such there's a there is such a thing as male female nature and we both have a tendency to do particular things. And I think both of those things have been played upon to keep us fighting and to keep us apart. I think that both of those things have been manipulated. There's nothing wrong with male and female nature. We were both designed 
you know, I feel by the maker to do and operate in specific manners. But, you know, if you don't believe in that, that's you. You can say that biology designed us to do different things or to have different dispositions for a particular reason. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think that those dispositions have been played upon to pit us against one another. And one of the reasons or the main reason, the overarching reason is I think that there's money to be made primarily, excuse me, primarily by the women to keep men and women apart. And the reason I say it's more played upon in regards to the women is because women seek more variety than men do. I know the common saying is that, you know, men are visual creatures, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we need more variety. That's that's actually false and inaccurate. It's women that desire variety more so than the men do. And that's why when you go to different department stores or you go to the mall, that's why they have whole floors dedicated to women. Dudes, we're cool with a couple of the same designs of boxers and undergarments. And, you know, we're cool with like solid colors. We're cool with things like that. We're utilitarian. We're not really big on designs and having a bunch of colors and things like that. It's women who do like the nails. It's women who have to have, you know, a gazillion different pairs of panties and shoes and a particular, you know, dress wear for every kind of event. It's women that desire variety the most. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's a book by Barbara DeAngelis uh, called Things About Women That Men Should Know, where she goes into great detail about that. And I, I love that book because it goes over that and really gives you insight into female nature. And she talked about how women can go into space and basically make a bare space with nothing on the walls, no paint, no nothing, just a, just a bare space, a bare room with just nothing but white paint. And she can turn in and flip that thing. She can come in and flip that thing and make it gorgeous. We need that in the world. Men need that in their lives. Real talk. Because if it's us, if it's us just, look, I'm single right now. And my apartment is on some survivor man type of stuff. I got the basic necessities of what I need. And I'm fine with that. Real talk. I don't need nothing fancy. I got what I need to get where I need to go and do what I need to do. And that's it, man. I'm, I'm cool with that. When a woman comes in and starts adding little things onto your spot, man, you know what's up. What these companies have done, what corporate America has done is they've played on that. And what they've done is they've manipulated that side of female nature into basically never being satisfied. Because while that is female nature... At some point, practicality and being a mature adult needs to kick in. But what they've done is they put that side of female nature into overdrive. And what they've done is they've mastered the art of marketing and advertising to keep showing, to keep broadcasting to females and and basically shoving it down their throat that you 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 deserve more and more you you should never be satisfied with anything you deserve more and more and how do they do this reality tv they show you these luxurious lifestyles the things that you are probably never going to get they do it through the music they do it through everything they basically i mean if you just take a look at the average female rapper what is she talking about i'm a boss b and i deserve this and if uh If a nigga ain't giving me X, Y, Z, he's not worth my time. I deserve this. You could be the most average, lackluster woman out there, but they still keep telling you what you do and what you do, what you do deserve and what what is owed to you right out front, right out the gate without having to do any kind of work. And what they can do is capitalize on this. You see, after you see all the companies are in on it are the ones that can make money from you are in on it. Everyone's in it from the TV networks because that keeps you watching what they're presenting. It keeps you hooked on what they have being promoted. You know, reality TV shows and all that garbage. 
that keeps you watching because they want to keep the fantasy going for you and they understand how addictive all that imagery is. That goes for all the streaming sites because if you don't really have a, a man at home or you don't really have a successful family going on like that, you're gonna try to build you're gonna try to fill that void with something that's on Netflix or that's something that's on Hulu or whatever streaming sites you got, which is which is crazy because man, I really don't watch TV like that, man. It's crazy to me how much TV people like. I don't even just talking about women, but just TV in general. How much TV people watch, man. I recently just got a television like that uh, about three months ago. And I got regular public TV, man. To, uh, you know, I got stuff to do, dude. And I'm not knocking anybody who is subs to you know who subscribes to any streaming sites or anything like that. Do you, man? Whatever you got to do to unwind. But what I'm just trying to say. In this regard is they basically given women um, a substitute for having a man there because at the end of the day when you come home you're supposed to come home and talk with your man you're supposed to come home and bond with him you're supposed to come home and exchange thoughts and ideas with him you know talk about how your day was and uh, you know hear how his day was Y'all are supposed to come get on the same page when he gets home or when you get home. Y'all are supposed to chop it up, make sure y'all are on the same page in life and y'all are going in the same direction. You know, when you get home, you're supposed to be with your children. You're supposed to be helping them with their homework. You're supposed to be going to the PTA meetings and doing things like that. There really ain't no time for, you know, streaming services and stuff like that. But what they've convinced you is that, hey, there's a substitute for that when you get home. This will take the place of what you're supposed to be having with your man and with your family. Real talk. You know, and then th there's the therapy industry that capitalizes on that. I mean, if you're alone, ladies, and I'm just going to say this, and fellas too, but, you know, the whole I'm strong and independent thing is the, is the mantra of most women nowadays. But ladies, there's no substitute for a man. And when you don't have a man, when you don't have a man and when you don't have that that masculine, we can't fill that masculine void that's in your life, you're going to be lonely. Your family can't fill that void. Your aunts and your uncles can't fill that void. Your dad can't fill that void. Your cousins, your mom, nothing can really fill that void of somebody, especially a man who's, committed to you fully and completely who's willing to get out here and who's willing to get out here and provide for you and go to war for you and have your back in every way and who's getting out who's willing to get out here and make life easy make life easier for you there's no replacement of that and when you don't have that kind of presence in your life that messes with you psychologically and emotionally you need that masculine figure to come and balance you out just like a man needs a woman to come and balance him out. And most men realize that. Most men, look, you know, dudes, we like each other's company. We're like hanging out and we're like, you know, watching sports and doing whatever. And having a beer or two, a whoop de woo But we would, we'd much rather be around our lady, man, to keep it a buck with you. I mean, I got my guy friends, man. We cool in the game and, you know, we're going to hang out and do what it do, whoop de woo but them, them, them dudes know I'll get tired of them, man. I'm, I'm trying to be around some feminine energy. Real talk. <laughs> that, look, I'm going to just put it like this. There's no equivalent in the guy world of a girl's trip. Dudes can't really take no trip with one. We can't take a trip with one another. Not for no long extended period of time. Now, you know, back when we was younger, you know, there was, there was the whole Cancun thing. And you just go do Cancun or go to you know, Mardi Gras or whatever. But yeah, that was like a day. And then we be like, hey, all right, dude, I'm tired of you. We understand the, the necessity of feminine energy. Dudes don't really hang around each other like that. For the most part, if we're kicking it with each other, it's to discuss some business, uh, some kind of money making plans or something like that. Again, we hang around each other to do guy stuff 
on occasion, but it's you know norm, normal. We're building something. We get together to grill or whatever. But then you know that's pretty much it. We're, we're pretty much done with each other after that. You feel me? But when you don't have that masculine energy in your life, ladies, that takes a toll on you psychologically. When you're having to get out here and get it all on your own, you're having to hustle out on your own and do what the guys do. Not to say women can't do it. And, you know, let me disclaimer, that's not to say women can't do it. But psychologically, we're built to get out here and do the same thing day in and day out and to not have variety and to deal with the bare minimum and to not have the um, kind of the pretty things in life the decorative things in life we're built with we're built psychologically to do the same thing over and over and over for years and decades we can deal without the creature comforts for extended periods of time yes women can do it too but more we're more psychologically equipped to do so that starts breaking a woman's psyche after a while she starts having psychological issues after a while when you don't have that masculine man to come say you know what i got this man Yo, chill out. I got this. I know you can do it, but you don't have to. And furthermore, I don't want those effects to come upon you if you were to try to get out here and do it yourself. Do your woman thing. When you don't have that, that's when you start having psychological issues. That's when you start having mental issues, emotional issues. And guess who benefits from that? The pharmaceuticals. One of the most prescribed drugs right now in the world is antidepressants. And I think right after that, it's opioids. That's when you start trying to self-medicate. They benefit from you. Ladies, they benefit from you being single. They benefit from you being single. Let me just stress that. That whole strong and independent thing is a myth. Really... Before World War II, women weren't in the workforce like that. And the common myth is that, you know, men were keeping women from working and yada, yada, yada. That's a bunch of crap. That's a lie. That's a myth. But corporate America saw something during World War II because, you know, men were at war and they were having to go fight wars. And, you know, we needed more people on the manufacturing lines to build planes and and bombs and all kind of stuff like that. And a lot of women joined the workforce. And, you know, there's even that famous propaganda uh, poster of, um, I forget, is it, is it Ruby the Riveter? It's something the Riveter. Forgive me if I'm messing that up. They'll correct me in the comment section. But basically, they started promoting women being in the workforce to help out with the war effort. And at that particular time, it was necessary. But after the war ended, you have to understand during the war, the U.S. economy exploded. It, the U.S. economy was booming. And part of the reason why it was booming like that was because women joined in the manufacturing efforts. They had to because they had to um, they had to join in to meet the supply of demands for all the you know weapons and stuff like that. But what corporate America saw was how profitable that was. You feel me? So after World War II and in the 60s and the 70s, that's when you started getting the whole sexual liberation women's movement. A lot of people, a lot of the, you know, the women believe that the feminist movement came out of, you know, a couple of group, a small group of women who just had had enough. And they're like, we deserve equal rights. And we're going to get um, X, Y, Z, what the men have. It really didn't come out of that. The government actually started promoting that because they saw how profit, how profitable it was to keep women in the workforce. It's profits to be made off that. Number one, because production increases. But number two, the more money that a woman has, the more money that she can spend. You feel me? And that still goes on today. That whole, you can be an independent woman boss babe and by the way white women really don't practice that like that 
that's a whole other podcast for a whole nother day, but they really kind of catered to black women on that regard because white women kind of know the game at the end of the day, but they really kind of catered to black women in that regard. You need to be single. You, you don't need no man. Keep your man out the house. And you can handle it all on your own. And that eventually that takes a toll on you mentally. Then you're resorting to all kinds of drugs, all types of antidepressants, and which kind of segues into the next thing. Then you end up needing therapy. Now, I've, I've promoted therapy plenty of times on you know this platform. You know that was that was a big thing when I got started doing the levels of love tips. Was you know. Um, you know, emotional literacy and all that stuff. I've kind of strayed away from that because now I've kind of seen how the uh, mental health industry kind of operates. And when it comes to a lot of these therapists, from what I've been seeing, and I'm not, I'm not saying if you feel like you need therapy, don't go get it. I'm just saying there's a lot of bad actors that have come in the therapy world and their main goal is to not get you to a space where you can function as a productive adult in society their whole thing is to keep you a permanent patient i've been noticing that more and more you know a lot of my friends and stuff like yo i'm in therapy especially a lot of my female friends or associates a lot of them have been saying y'all been seeing a therapist whooped a woman and i'm like oh that's that's cool and i hope you've been making progress i'm like how long have you been actually been attending these sessions Oh, I've been going to therapy three years. I'm like, dude, really? <laughs> three years? I, okay. All right, I guess. And and the reason I say that is because it's just like, what doctor do you know that you, what physician do you know that you go to where the ultimate goal is to not make it to where you don't have to go? For instance, you know, and I wouldn't wish this on anybody. And I'm, I'm bringing this up as an example. It's a horrible example, but it's what's at the top of my head. But let's say, you know, you're dealing with cancer or something like that. God forbid. And you're going to get in these treatments. And you're having to go through chemo and having to go through all this you know, horrible stuff. The goal is to not have cancer no more at all. That's the goal of the doctor. That's the goal of the physician that's treating you. And a lot of the times I feel like with therapy, that's not the same thing. Or that's not the same goal, rap. If they can keep you in therapy for as long as humanly possible, now that benefits them. And they can feed you, you know, the horse crap that, oh, well, you know, it could be... Therapy is an ongoing thing that really doesn't have it. Then horse crap. If your therapist hasn't given you like, you know, goals as to when you're supposed to be at a mental state where you can function as a healthy human being, they're full of crap. If your therapist's goal is to become your buddy, and I've actually you know, heard a couple of my female friends tell me that. We're like friends and we hang out. I'm like, oh gosh, you don't, you just don't even know. And this is typical. And I know I'm getting on the women. I'm I'm not just singling y'all out. You know, when I talk about why I feel men and women are being driven apart because there's some things on the men's side too, but I feel like it's, I feel like it's directed at y'all the most. And one of those ways that I feel like it's directed is through social media, because just like there is a certain air to men being prideful creatures, and we are prideful creatures. Yeah, we we have a tendency to be prideful in some ways that can be a good thing. In some ways that can be a bad thing. We can be overly prideful and then be, you know, overly wanting to defend that pride, which can just be impractical at times but what a lot of the parties that be or entities seeking to take advantage a lot of them like to do is they like to play on female vanity 
in every woman there is a certain level of vanity just like there's a certain air of pride within all dudes what social media does is it gives a platform that women have never really had before and our brother Jason Black broke this down on his business podcast. I learned a lot of the game from him and uh, from you know, the Mac lessons. And I've learned a lot of the game from a lot of other uh, people. But what that does is that gives women an ad it gives women an avenue to have attention from people from all over the world, as opposed to back then before the advent of social media. You know, if you got attention, it was from you know the neighborhood pe people in your neighborhood for the most part. You know, unless you was an actress or a celebrity or something like that, you really didn't get that much attention. But what social media does is it's broken down all those borders. You can get attention from random people all over the world without even having to travel. And what that's done with women has created this very bloated and grotesque Gro bloated, grotesque, and pumped up, inflated ego. That's very unnatural. I remember I was, you know, somebody, somebody I was in a relationship with. And one of the reasons I got in a relationship with her was because she really wasn't into social media like that. As a matter of fact, after we started going out for like a year she ended up getting off there she ended up deleting all the platforms and she was like you know what i feel a lot better you know not being on those platforms man i just feel like less stressed out like she said the less i feel the need to post something and let everybody know what i'm doing it's just you know it's less stressful that way i, I honestly feel healthier not being on there and I, I completely understand what she was talking about me personally i'm on social media for business and to flirt I'll straight up tell you that I'm on there for business and to flirt. If I want to connect with my friends, I'll connect with them in person. I don't need to go on a website to do that. That's just, makes no sense to me, but whatever. Rant over. But yeah, she ended up getting off for a while. And for whatever the hell reason later on, she ended up getting back on there. Which is when me and her started having issues. And I won't go into the specifics, but that just goes to show they have a way of kind of manipulating women into doing that. And they're not doing that for no reason. They're doing that to keep you on there, to, which kind of ties back into what I was talking about earlier. You have to understand, Facebook monitors all your likes, all the people that, you know, all the... Uh, platforms that you subscribe to and the people that you follow they keep track of all that and they sell that to third-party advertisers that's why it's a free service because they're gathering all your information and all these advertisers and marketers pay them big money for that so that's why they start marketing to you stuff because you liked it or because you know they heard you talking about it on your phone because in the terms of service, they have the they have the legal right to turn on your speaker and your camera whenever the hell they feel like. And they can keep track of all your habits and they know women are going to sit there and talk to each other about all the stuff that they like to do. Because, you know, it's been scientifically shown that women talk way more than men during any given day. But they can monitor all that stuff and they can market you. And because they know about that need for quote unquote variety. They know that you're going to be willing to, more willing rather, to emotionally spend more so than men. That's real deep, family. Oh, and in regards to the men, you know, I'll take it back to the pharmaceutical companies. I mean, you know, cardiovascular, cardiovascular meds, man. Being single for dudes is shown not to be good for our health like that, man. You know, for the heart, for the, for the brain, all that. That's real talk. There's money to be made, you know, divorce courts. And I'll get into that, you know, in a little bit. But, you know, even, you, know you might think this is kind of silly, but even hardware stores, because a lot of y'all women, y'all be singing, y'all be buying a gang of plants. <laughs> Can I keep it honest with you? Y'all be buying all types of plants and, you know, man, what I'm, 
people I used to work with, she was big on, you know, keeping her little garden popping off. She had all the little fertilizers and the weed whackers and the trimmers and all that, man. Yeah, real talk, man. You know, y'all be buying all them bird feeders. <laughs> all them bird seeds and all types of stuff, man. Yo, it's money to be made off that. Don't even get me started on the alcoholic companies. Man, look here. Those alcoholic companies be making a gang, making a making a bag off of people. That's just people in general. I ain't even talking about women. People in general, man. They see that, man. There's money to be made in that. That's real talk. Now, let's not even get into the divorce courts from the divorce attorneys to the courts themselves, to the child support agencies, all that. Even a lot of these government programs that assist all these single mother families, you know, the taxpayers pay that. Yeah, they're in on all that. The taxpayers pay that. You know, when it comes to like WIC and you know, Section 8 and things like that, that's, you know, that's a product of the taxpayers. If you don't have a man, you know, to help you out financially and stuff, you're more, you're more likely to have to get on those types of programs. And yeah, so that's what I mean. There's this money to be made off of the destruction of families. And to get even, a, to get even deeper, you know, if there's not a mother and a father in the household, your kids are going to have psychological issues. They're probably going to grow up to repeat a lot of the same patterns that you and your significant other had. And then the cycle just continues. So you see, to the fellows and the ladies out there, it's not that there's a, this inherent rift between us that occurred naturally that no it's not it it's not because both in, in actuality both sides have things they need to work on but the reason i got more so on the ladies is because the society is especially talking to you because of female nature and what we as a what we as a society have to get back to doing is realizing that men and women need each other we absolutely need each other we were designed to work as a team and the reason we've been pitted against each other is because a select few not a lot but a select few actually who actually understand this concept they understand men and women need each other and their families are intact and their wealth is going to be passed down and they're going to be doing their thing and overruling the rest of us you know as long as we allow it but what we have to get back to is realizing that men and women are built to complement one another. The most beautiful thing in nature, in my humble opinion, is the complementary nature of men and women. How we comp comp we complement each other physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We were designed to work together to accomplish way more than we could all on our own. And we have to get away from this whole thing, especially the women, have to get away from this whole notion that you don't need a man. That you can just, you can reach your fullest potential by yourself. Because here's the thing. We as men and women can't reach our fullest potential as individuals without the other. Despite what they tell you and despite what they keep preaching to you. And the music industry is real good for that. And you got your Cardi B's and your Meg The Stallions and Nicki Minaj. And you know, I like, you know, certain stuff here and there, you know, when... You know, if I'm feeling stank and I want something to turn up real, you know, turn up to real quick while I'm riding over to a friend's house, you know, I get it. But they're real good for that. You know, the whole boss B thing. That's a that's a bunch of poison that they're delivering to you. Those people don't give a crap about whether you live or die or whether you find happiness. Because all these industries are intertwined. They all benefit one another. And, you know. For me to break that down, I would have to do a whole other podcast. But they're all in on it. They get together in these these meeting rooms and they discuss strategies on how society is going to be 
orchestrated. And they've determined that the most profitable profitable way about the most profitable way about going about things is to pit the men and the women against one another, specifically the women against the men. And that's something we got to stray away from. And I feel like the solution to that is for us to get back to understanding that we were designed to work as a team and to work as a team to build these kinds of families that these people or these entities and uh, that are in power, the entities that be don't want us to. And that's the whole goal. And that's the whole mission of this podcast is for men and women to get back to that, which is why I started this back up. And again, I'm sorry for taking away for so long. Um, like I said, I had my issues I had to deal with. I'm not here to make excuses though. I'm not going to make excuses to y'all and I will be posting these regularly. And my hope and my goal is that we can get back to where we need to be as men and women and that's working together and that's being one cohesive unit because society in general is dependent upon that our our success as a society not just here in america but overall is dependent on that and i want to get women and men back to that but in any case i really appreciate everybody for tuning in thank you so much to all of those uh, who subscribed and who have shared this on your social media, please share this. I'm really trying to get this message out. Today, this message was brought to you by rootofalllove.com. That's where you can find a lot of my you know, articles and pieces that I've written about this topic. But also, you can find my literary art there in regards to romance and relationships, things of that nature. And um. I'll put the link to my Instagram, my Levels of Love Instagram, my Levels of Love Twitter, and my Levels of Love Facebook in the description. So I encourage you to join those. And I really appreciate everyone coming in tonight. It's been a pleasure speaking with you all. And I know I keep saying tonight, man, it could be whatever time of day it is, wherever you're at. You know, that's that's fine. But wherever you're at and whatever type of day it is, thank you for joining. And as always, from the soul. The Stormy Poet.